Hello and welcome to today's tutorial session with Kainamak. And in today's lessons, we are going to solve some questions on magnetic circuits. Right, so question one says that a mild steel ring having a cross sectional area of 800 millimeters squared and a mean circumference of 400 millimeter, it has a coil of 500 tens wound uniformly around it. So we are to calculate for the reluctance of the ring and also the current required to produce a flux of 700 microweber in the ring if the relative permeability is 400. So we can pick out the most important information that we need. So we have the cross sectional area. Sectional area. That is A to be 800 mm squared. We also have the mean circumference. Mean circumference. The mean circumference always is the length. Okay. And that is 400 mm. And we have the number of tens that is number of tens that is n we have that one to be 500 okay but then our cross sectional area should be in meter squared so we will change this into meter squared right so let's see we have 800 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 m squared how i mean how did this turn into negative 6 so if you have m m squared it is the same as this and this is the same as m m times m m so this is m squared times m squared but then m as a prefix is 10 raised to the power minus 3 all squared over here so you see that this one will multiply the minus 3 over here so it will be 10 minus 6 that is why we have 800 times 10 to the power minus 6 meter squared our length should also be in meters so 400 times so we will change this m as a prefix it's going to be 10 raised to the power minus 3 m right and then we can represent this question I mean in the form of a diagram so it says that it is a steel ring so let's say the steel ring is like this we are saying that it has a cross-sectional area so we can see that the cross-sectional area here is the 800 mm squared and the mean circumference that is the length of this steel, of this whole steel, was 400 mm, and the number of tens, that is the number of wires wound around it, was 500, and we will have a certain current flowing through like this. So it says that we should find the reluctance of the ring. So we know that reluctance S the length out of mu naught mu r a so we know l as a length over here that is 400 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 out of mu naught that is the permeability of vacuum we have mu naught over here so mu naught has a value of 4 pi times 10 raised to the power minus 7 always it is a constant so i'll put that in here then the relative permeability was given that is 400 and we have the area here that is 800 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 so our reluctance that is i our reluctance by computation is going to be 9 9 4 
718.397 ampere tens per Weber. Right? And we have II. So II tells us to find the current required to produce this number of flux. But then we know that MMF, that is the magnetomotive force, is either equal to the number of turns times the current or the flux times the reluctance. Okay, so what information do we have? We have the flux, the number of flux over here. And we've also found S over here. So then we can use this equals to this. So we can find the MMF. So MMF should be equal to the flux times the reluctance. So we have flux over here to be 700 micro Weber. So micro is 10 raised to the power minus 6. And it will multiply the reluctance that I had over here. That is 994718.397. So I'll have my MMF to be equal to 696.303 ampere tens. But then we know that MMF the same time is equal to the number of tens times the current. So then we can see that I is equal to the MMF out of the number of tens. So MMF we had 696.303 out of the number of tens, I think it was given in the question to be 500 over here. So, out of 500. So, the current required will be 1.392 ampere. So, in question 2, it says that a coil of 200 tens is wound uniformly over a wooden ring having a mean circumference of 500 mm in a uniform cross-sectional area of 500 mm squared so if the current through the coil is 2 ampere calculate the magnetic field intensity the flux density the flux and the mmf so as i said earlier in example one we can represent this question in the form of a diagram so this is going to be the coil my drawing is really bad. <laughs> okay. So this is our curl. So it has, you know, the mean circumference, that is the length, to be 500 mm. The cross-sectional area is going to be something like this. Over here, that is going to be 500 mm squared. And we have curls around it like this so from the question the number of curls was 2000 and the current through the curl is 2 ampere so now we can list these things down so we can see that the number of tens that is n is 2000 so we have the mean circumference that is the length to be 500 mm and we have the cross-sectional area which is still the area to be 500 mm squared we also have the current through the curves to be 2 ampere right but then we know that we should change our length to meters so changing this to meters is going to be 500 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 m we should also maintain this in meter squared. So changing this, we are going to have 500 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 m squared. And this is because m m squared is the same as m m all squared, which is the same as m m times m m. But then we know that this is m squared m squared. But we know that m as a prefix is 10 raised to the power minus 3 all squared. And we have this m squared over here. 
So this two multiplying this minus three, you have ten raised to the power minus six. So that is why we have ten raised to the power minus six here, and the m squared is here. Right. So this question says that in I, we should find the magnetic field intensity. Magnetic field intensity. That is H. Magnetic field intensity is also the same as the MMF per length. Right, so the formula we have H is equal to FL. So this is what I do when we say that find magnetic field intensity. Just look at the field over here. You have F over here, you also have L over here. So just divide F by L and you have the formula for magnetic field intensity. Okay, so we know that F at the same time is equal to the number of turns times the current over the length and we have all these details down here we know that n is 2000 we know the current to be 2 and the length to be 500 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 so the magnetic field intensity or the mmf per length is equal to 8000 ampere turns per meter very very simple so we have ii ii says we should find the flux density but then we know that b is equal to the file over a but then we also have this formula b mu naught h so given or looking at the 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 information that was given we cannot use this but then we can use this because we know the value of h and we know mu know that is the permeability of free space or vacuum we know that already so then we can find b as a flux density so b should be equal to mu naught which is a constant of 4 pi times 10 raised to the power minus 7 times h h is what we just found over here that is 8000 so computing this you have 0 tesla very good so moving on to question 3 that is flux flux is equal to b times the area Looking at this formula up here, we can see that the flux should be equal to the flux density, that is B, times the area. But then we have B over here. We just found that is 0 0.010. And we also have the area over here, that is 500 times 10 raised to the power minus. So the flux in this question is going to be 5 micro. Weber. The last thing we are supposed to find is the MMF or the magnetomotive force. But then we know that MMF is equal to the number of turns, that is N, times the current through the coils. And we know that we have N to be 2000 and the current through the coils to be 2. So then we will have. 4000 ampere tens very simple but then we also have this formula mmf is equal to the flux times reluctance so depending on um, the details that is going to be given in the question then you know which kind of mmf formula to use all right so in question three it says that we should calculate the mmf required Produce a flux of 0 0.10 Weber across an air gap of 8 mm long, having an effective area of 700 centimeters squared. Very good. So, what we have to find is the MMF of air gap. That's what we should find. But then we know that our flux is 
0 0.10 Weber. In the question, we also have the air gap length, that is the L, to be also 8 mm. We also have area, that is the effective area, to also be 700 cm squared. But then our length should be in meters, so we will change 1 m as a prefix. So it's going to be 8. M is 10 raised to the power minus 3, leaving this M, which is here, and 700 centimeters squared is going to be 700 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 M squared because in the area should be in meter squared. So if you have CM squared, it is the same as having C squared M squared. So we know that the prefix for C is 10 raised to the power minus 2. So C, if C is 10 raised to the power minus 2 and we square it like this, and we have this M squared over here, 2 multiplying minus 2, we are going to have 10 raised to the power minus 4 M squared. That is why we have here to be 10 raised to the power minus 4. So let's see. In the question we have file. And we have area so then we can find b that is the flux density which is file over area so file is 0 0.10 and we have the area to be 700 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 so we have b to be 0 0.143 tesla this is going to help us find h which is the mmf per length or the magnetic field intensity so we know that in fact b is equal to mu naught h but then we can see that h is equal to b over the permeability of free space because air gap is a free space so we are we are using this one so we know b that is the magnetic flux that we found over here to be 0.143 tesla out of mu naught that is the permeability of free space or vacuum which is 4 pi it is a constant 4 pi times 10 raised to the power of minus 7 so we have h to be equal to 11379.5 8 ampere times per meter but then what we really want to find is the mmf of the air gap but then let's look at something if you have a t over m here and we multiply it by the length of the air gap we will have the mmf of the air gap so let's look at this if i have a t over m over here and i multiply this by the length that is length of air gap it's going to leave me with 80 which is the same as mmf so this is in meters this will cancel out so it will be left with just 80 and 80 is the same as mmf right so let's look at something mmf of air gap is equal to a t per meter so a t per meter is h and h we had one one three seven nine five dot seven eight times the length of the air gap that is 8 mm so it's going to be 8 times 10 which is the power minus 3 so the mmf of air gap is going to be 910.37 ampere times as i said because this m is going to cancel this 
m over here and it will be left with just 80 but then we know ampere times per meter that is what we found over here that is the h that is the magnetic field intensity and it has a unit of 80 or ampere times per meter so if you multiply this ampere times per meter by the length of the air gap we are going to be left with just 80 and 80 is the unit of mmf that is ampere times so that is why we have this okay so in our last question we have this diagram or oh, we've been given this diagram and it has i think three parts a b and c and a has parameters b the same thing c which is an air gap as we can all see also has some parameters right so it says that we should assume that there is no leakages and our permeability that is the relative permeability is 1500 so the question is we should estimate the current required in the circuit to produce the flux density so looking at the diagram over here we have some windings over here we have the current mmf and a b and c also have an some parameters that will be needed for this question and look at the diagram a b and c are in series because if for example we have a current flowing through this b and the same current that is going to flow through a like this and the same current that is going to flow through c because it says that we should assume there is no leakages so the current or the let me say the flux in b is the same flux in c and the same flux in a so from this that is assuming that there is no leakages we can conclude that the flux in the air gap that is part c is the same flux in a and b so then if we find the flux in c it is the same flux in part a and part b since they are in series as we can see from the diagram so finding the flux in c flux is equal to b that is the flux density at b and the area at c right so let's look at the parameters that, that was given in part c that is the air gap we need b that is the flux density and the area so flux density at c is the so flux at c is equal to the flux density at c so let's look at okay we have 0 0.3 over here and we have ac that is the area at the air gap or part c the area here is 150 mm squared but then the area as i always say should be in meter squared so i will change that which is going to be 150 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 meter squared so the flux at c is going to be 45 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 Weber okay so similarly or from there we can say that or we can find the magnetomotive force at part A and we know that F or the MMF can also be equal to the flux times reluctance so since it is at part A, we can say that the flux at A times the reluctance at A. But from the onset, we said that the flux in the air gap is the same as the flux in part A and part B because the question says we should assume that there is no leakages. So the flux that will flow through A is the same flux that will flow through B, and the same flux will also flow through C. So since we know the flux in part C is the same flux at A, 
So let me write that flux at C is equal to flux at A and also flux at B. So from here we can do the substitution. Flux at A, but S is a reluctance. You know that S is L out of mu naught, mu r, and area. So since it is at part A, we just input the parameters that we're given over here. So file A is going to be 45 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. The length here is 60 mm, but then it should be in meters. So it's going to be 60 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 all over mu naught, that is the permeability of free space or vacuum, which is a constant, 4 pi times 10 raised to the power minus 7. And mu r relative permeability that was given over here, that is 1500 times the area at A. Area was given over here, but then it should be in meter squared. So it's going to be 50 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. So FA, that is the MMF at part A, is going to be 28.6 ampere tens. The same thing is going to happen at part B. So FB is going to be the flux at B and the reluctance at B. But then we know that the flux at B is the same as the flux at A and the flux at C. So then... But then reluctance is going to be L at B all over mu R mu naught area at B. So substitution is going to be 45 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 times the length at B, that is 30 mm. But then it should be in M, so we will change 1 M I mean to the prefix. So it's going to be 30 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 out of mu r that was 1500 times mu naught that is 4 pi times 10 raised to the power minus 7 and the area at v that was 80 mm squared so it's going to be 80 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 and this should give us 8.95 ampere tens. So now finding the MMF at C is going to be the flux at C and the reluctance at C. Okay, so flux at C, S, which is the reluctance, is going to be LC out of, therefore the MMF at C is going to be flux at C times the reluctance, which is L at C all over mu r mu naught and the area at c so then it's going to be by substitution 4 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 as we had over here times the length at c the length at c was 0 0.3 mm but then in meters it's going to be times 10 raised to the power minus 3 all over mu r by the relative permeability of air gap or vacuum so we can see that c is a vacuum or free space is one so we are going to have the relative permeability over here to be one times mu naught that is permeability of free space so let's look at this over here the mu r that is the permeability a relative permeability of free space because part C is an air gap or a free space. So the relative permeability over here of a, a free space is going to be 1. Permeability of free space or air gap is always 1. So my mu R over here is going to be 1 times mu naught that is permeability of free space going to be 4 pi times 10 raised to the power minus 7 
and the area at C that was 150 mm squared so I will change 1 m so that I'll have my value in meter squared so it's going to be 150 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 so by computation I'll have this one to be 71.6 to ampere tens so now if they are in series then I can say that the total MMF is going to be the MMF at A plus MMF at B plus MMF at C. So the MMF in total is going to be FA plus FB plus FC. So when you add these, you are going to have 109.17 ampere tens. So the question was or required us to find the current over here. So now we know that MMF in total should be equal to the total number of turns and the total current entering. So if I want the total current, it is going to be the total number of MMF or the total amount of magnetomotive force out of the total number of turns. So then the total amount of MMF that is FT over here is going to be 109.17 out of the total number of tens that is 2500 so then the current that we are supposed to find will be equal to 0 0.04367 amperes Thank you.